Copyright, University of South Australia. This recording may contain third-party copyright material. Apart from any use permitted under the Copyright Act 1968, no part of this recording may be reproduced or rebroadcast by any means or process without the prior written permission of the University of South Australia and the copyright owners. Welcome to a video on the pelvis and the hip. So let's start off by having a look at uh, one side of the pelvis here. So three bones that would make up one side of the pelvis. So this is the right side of the pelvis. Here is its medial aspect and its lateral aspect. We have the ilium above, the pubis anteriorly, and the ischium uh, inferiorly. So what we can see here is there's a rough line coming across the top of this crest which is the joint line which would exist between the bones. Now if you're having a look on the lateral aspect, the acetabulum which is this cup like feature here is actually the junction for these three bones. So effectively if I put my hand across like this, anything above is the ilium and then I go like that, anything between my thumbs there is the ischium and then the pubis lies anteriorly. So together with the sacrum which would lie here, it would make up the pelvis. So if we have a look in this model, we can see how the pelvis would come together. So two sacroiliac joints, one on either side, and the junction here anteriorly which is the pubic symphysis. Now the sacroiliac joint is special in that during your adolescent years, the anterior half of it here uh, tends to be more synovial in its um, design and the posterior aspect of it here becomes more fibrous as we age. Now something that's special about that is when you are delivering the baby this joint becomes mobile along with the pubic symphysis and it allows changes in these diameters here so that the head can pass through the birth canal. So if we have a look at the acetabulum in a little bit more detail we can see that this surface here shaped like the horseshoe is called the lunate surface and this is the one which is covered in hyaline cartilage and the fossa here can would contain a ligament and a fat pad for shock absorption now then if we bring the femur in we can see that the head of the femur is ball in its shape and then the acetabulum is like the socket so this is what helps us form that ball and socket joint of the hip now because this is a ball and socket joint it means that it is multi-axial in its nature. So if we've got the hip joint, then we know that it is synovial and also ball and socket. Now if we were to draw a quick picture of what a ball and socket joint looks like, you would have here above, so a stem which would be connecting to the ball, like this. And then around the outside, you would have the socket, which is the ball is fitting into just perfectly. All right, so here you would have your ball and socket type joint. Now what this means is that it can move pretty much in any direction. So it can go forwards and backwards then to each side and then it can also rotate around so what that allows us to do then is to have a multi axial type joint All right so what are the motions that therefore occur around the hip joint is we have flexion and extension A B duction and a deduction and then we have rotation now if we remember from what we've talked about flexion and extension these things occur in the sagittal plane abduction and adduction in the coronal or frontal plane and then rotation occurs in the transverse or horizontal plane. So if we recall what flexion and extension are, 
Flexion is to reduce any joint angle. So like here, my finger is straight. So if I bend it like that, I'm flexing the joint. That's to 90 degrees and extending it to straighten you back out. Abduction and adduction is motion away and towards the midline. So if we consider the middle finger here, if we take the fingers away, that's to abduct and bring the fingers together, that's to adduct. So to move the leg away from the body is abduction and bring it back together is adduction. And then rotation, effectively, if you go down the series, it will turn your foot in or turn your foot out. Now these types of rotation are called internal and external or medial and lateral. So what are some other supporting structures we have around the hip joint is we have very thick, strong ligaments. So here you can see ligaments uh, forming the fibrous capsule of the hip joint, whereby we would name these because they go from one part of the pelvis to the femur. So we know that this part above is the ilium, so we call these two parts of the ligament here the iliofemoral. This one's coming from the pubis, so we call pubofemoral, and the one on the posterior aspect from the ischium, so ischiofemoral. This rim that you can see passing around the top of the acetabulum, right? so if we have a look here on this side where it's just bony, you can see the brim or rim of the acetabulum, and you have an extension of the capsule here. This is what's called the labrum, so that'll act like a suction cup and keeps the head of the femur well inside the acetabulum. Now, these ligaments here, the iliofemoral is the strongest as an example, so it can support a lot of weight. And as a complex, what we can see is if we were to flex the joint, so here this is anteriorly, if we flex the joint, that these ligaments, they buckle. What it means then is that they are in their loose position. All right. Now, what you can also see is that when you flex the joint, right, if we use the bony structures here, and if we were to put this together and flex the joint, you can see that the bones come more in contact with one another. So what they do is they increase their congruency, is the word, to increase bony contact. Now if we go in the opposite way, if we were to extend the hip joint, you can see that they're no longer buckling and they're actually pulling tight. And then the head of the femur is trying to come out of the acetabulum. So what's actually happening is these ligaments are pulling tight to resist any further extension. All right, so what you're able to actually do is, is rely on these ligaments to help you stand. All right? And this is like a lazy position that you might see someone standing out at the bus stop holding their phone with their pelvis forwards. All right, that was an introduction to the hip joint and we'll go into the muscles after. Thanks.